Hello and welcome to my channel. This landscape is going to be another one with a lot of contrast and it's inspired by the Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. I'm going to use some of my usual charcoal tools. In terms of the composition, the scene is going to be divided roughly into three parts, as is often the case with a lot of my landscapes. So the first third of the height of the paper is going to be the line of the trees and bushes and uh, about two-thirds of the height of the paper will have the mountain peak or the peak of that volcano and then the rest of it is going to be the sky there's going to be a large tree in the middle the first thing I'm going to do is put down some charcoal powder using a paper towel. I'm just going to dip a paper towel into some charcoal powder every now and then and then spread that material lightly onto the top part of the paper. I want to establish some base value for the sky because some of the lighter parts of the mountain are supposed to be lighter than that background. So just a little bit of value here for the background. I don't need any texture. I don't. I want it to blend very smoothly. And I'm using charcoal powder. Once that is blended, and once I have enough value in place, I'm going to move on with the mountain. Like I said, I want this to be pretty smooth. Now for the mountain, I'm going to work mostly with willow charcoal for now. In terms of my materials, I'm going to use charcoal pencils and willow charcoal and also, of course, charcoal powder, which I created by sharpening one of my pencils. So I'm using willow charcoal now. It's soft natural charcoal that comes in sticks and it's very easy to manipulate in terms of the amount of value you put it down on the paper, it doesn't really stick to the paper much. You can move it around easily with a brush. You can easily remove it with an eraser. So it's easy to modify and control the amount of value. This is what I want for now, but also I need to make sure that the mountain stands out against the background in terms of the amount of value. It needs to be a little bit darker overall, even though some portions of it will be a bit lighter, as you will see. So I'm doing a little bit of blending, experimenting with a number of different blending tools, and for now I'm mostly blending with this soft brush because I want to blend this uh, part very evenly, but at the same time I need to make sure that it remains darker uh, than the background, and that I have a fairly clean edge to value between the mountain and the background. So in some cases you can have blurry edges, but in other, in other cases you need to have a very clean edge to value. After that, I'm going to do a little bit of work with a charcoal pencil. I use Master Touch woodless charcoal pencils here, and I'm going to use two grades, the medium and soft. The one that I'm using now in a pencil holder, it's a medium charcoal pencil. I'm going to use the soft charcoal pencil a little bit more for the foreground areas and the trees and things like that, where we're going to have some darker shadow areas. The purpose of these marks that I made with a charcoal pencil is to add a little bit of variation and texture to the train, so that it feels like some of the parts of that mountain peak are a little bit more rough and rocky. And after that, I'm going to do a bit of work with, uh, with an eraser. This is a coin or eraser and a pencil. It's a soft rubber eraser uh, that can be held and sharpened like a pencil. And I'm just using it to make uh, some parts of the peak a little bit lighter. Um, so you can tell now that the light source is coming more from the left. It's coming from above and the left. So that's why this part of the mountain is a bit lighter. Also, the, the very peak is 
are a little bit snowy and a little bit lighter than the middle uh, part of the mountain and the foot of the mountain. So I'm going to make those parts of the mountain a little bit darker and I'm going to leave the peak itself a bit lighter. I call it the peak even though some people would say a cone because it's uh, basically a volcano. It's an inactive vo uh, volcano. <coughs> Sorry and it has several of these peaks or cones. I don't really know which one this is, but I thought that it would look good for my scene. The reference will be included in the description if I remember to attach it. Um, here I'm also adding some lighter bits here in the middle part of that mountain just to make sure that it looks like the light is reaching maybe some other parts and just a for a little bit of variation in shape and value. Uh, so the reference is going to be there if you want to check it out, but I bunched the elements together a, a little bit because I wanted to have a better looking composition. I always like to rearrange the elements at least a little bit. Anyway, I made sure that I have a clean edge between the mountain and the, between the vol volcano and the background and the sky. And now I'm just blending the rest of it so that I don't have too much of that distracting texture and those lines which which I don't really need there. I wanted some detail or suggestion of detail at the top. I achieved that and now the rest of it is going to be less detailed and less distracting because I'm going to put some stuff in the foreground now. I'm going to draw so uh, I'm going to draw those trees and I want a slightly bit uh, simpler background for them. I also did some additional cleaning up around the edges to make sure that the edge is fairly clean and the, the object stands out nicely in contrast against the background. Another thing that you can do with a clean brush, you can dab on some parts which you covered with willow charcoal or vine charcoal and uh, you can make them lighter. It's like using an eraser almost but uh, you're just gently lifting up a little bit of value. It's kind of like uh, the lifting up technique in watercolor. And that's one of the things that I like about willow charcoal and vine charcoal because uh, it's easy to move around. So I use that technique to make the left side of the mountain just a little bit lighter in some areas and to create a little bit more variation in that terrain. Anyway, I'm going to switch to uh, the charcoal pencil again, the medium charcoal pencil, and I'm going to start working on the bottom portion of the scene which is going to be considerably darker. So in a lot of my landscapes you have you have a great deal of contrast and tension. The previous one was pretty much like that. This one is a little bit different in terms of the composition but the general idea is very similar because the lower part of the scene with the trees and the bushes and stuff is going to be a lot darker. I'm going to have a, a little bit larger, taller tree here to the left, which is why I'm putting in a little bit more effort and time to define its shape and to draw some parts of its canopy as well as the, um, of course, the branches and the tree trunk. All around it and under it, we're going to have a lot of smaller trees and bushes. And I'm also going to do a bit of blending with a brush because and now, as you can see, I'm drawing the branches. I'm going to do a bit of blending with a brush because I want these elements in the background to be a bit more blurry, a bit less defined. This tree in the middle, however, this is going to need to be a lot more defined in terms of both the amount of detail and shapes and also the amount of texture and contrast. Um, so my, the trick that I plan to apply here is to make one of the elements stand out both in terms of its position uh, in my composition but also in terms of the amount of detail whereas I will try to make the rest of the scene a little bit more impressionistic and a, a bit less detailed and I'm hoping to use that trick to draw focus to that more detailed part of the scene. And the most detailed part of the scene will be, be this tree in the middle, or it's not exactly in the middle, it's slightly to the right of the center. And it's, 
uh, I'm gonna take more time to um, to draw its shape and to explain um, the whole thing, the, the the whole canopy to the viewer a little bit better. So it's going to be a more elaborate group of shapes. And you can see that it consists of a bunch of these clusters of leaves. So it's one of those African types of trees. And these have a very interesting shape in comparison to some of the uh, trees that you can see, for example, here in Europe, where I live, because they feel kind of uh, flattened from the top. They are a lot wider uh, than they are tall. And I'm talking about the canopy. And even the individual segments of the canopy feel kind of uh, flattened a little bit. So th that's just the way they grow. And now I'm uh, drawing those branches, the system of branches. And you gotta draw these so that they are kind of all over the place because branches grow like that. They grow unpredictably, bending every which way. And of course they taper as they grow out. So since I'm going from top to bottom, I need to make sure that I make those shapes thicker and thicker. And if I go from uh, the bottom to the top, then I have to make them thinner and thinner and I, I have to make them branch out. So I'm going to be using a combination of these two approaches to get a nice looking tree with a lot of branches. And I'm also going to want to have a few of those bare branches which don't have any leaves or clusters of leaves on them. That also will look pretty interesting. But, but to get back to the um, overall scene and the overall composition, you can see now my intention. You can see how much contrast I'm creating with this canopy of, uh, of the tree in the middle and uh, uh, how nicely it stands out against the lighter background. It's really pushing that background further back, both in terms of th that feeling of depth and distance and also in terms of the amount of attention that it's grabbing because of that high contrast and uh, a lot of value. So I'm adding some more of these larger boughs, making the shape of the tree more interesting. If, the, if you look at the reference, you will see that the shape of the tree, the shape of my tree is quite a bit different. Um, I maybe simplified it a little bit in some ways, but you know, that's one of the things I always recommend. Don't get too hung up on the exact shapes or the exact details that you see in your references, neither in terms of individual objects nor in terms of the composition, because if you um, you want to achieve the exact same arrangement of elements, it's usually not going to be a great looking landscape. If you want to improve the appearance of the landscape, you want to move things around a little bit and change their size uh, here and there so that, you know, you would enhance the composition and make it more to your liking. So I, I drew quite a few of these smaller, thinner branches uh, in those parts of the tree, the, those parts of the canopy, uh, where, where the branches are not obscured by all the foliage. And I want to make it look like a lot of the branches are not obscured by the foliage because, honestly, when I look at these African trees, they're kind of, some of, there are, some of them are kind of bare, others well, their canopies don't appear too dense in terms of foliage, so you can see a lot of those twisted gnarly branches, and that's the look that I'm trying to achieve. Another tool that I'm using for blending and refining some of the details is a tortillion, and I'm using for that for some of the smaller details. But in addition to the soft brush, soft synthetic brush, I also use a hard bristle brush. Uh, I can use it to push in some of the um, some of that charcoal when I want to make sure that the areas remain darker. I talked about different effects or different blending tools in one of my previous videos, so I'm not going to go over that again. I just want to remind you that different blending tools act differently and they will give you uh, different results. Anyway, now I'm putting down a little bit of charcoal powder here at the bottom because I realize that the quickest and the most efficient way to fill in this portion of the drawing is just to put down charcoal powder and then blend it with my finger. 
but it's not going to be completely black and it's not going to be completely random because what I'm trying to achieve here is I want to achieve some variation in value so that I can create suggestions of shapes in that foreground area because um, this whole foreground area will be covered with a uh, lot of bushes and tall grass and maybe uh, smaller shorter trees and things like that so when I go like this with my finger I'm deliberately leaving some areas a bit lighter while pushing in a bit more charcoal into others and what's that achieving? It's giving me some random shadow areas here and there and some random lighter areas. And I'm going to use those uh, lighter portions to represent the top part of the bushes and trees which are sticking out and catching light from above from the light source. And I'm going to use those shadow areas to represent those parts of the bushes and trees which are further away from the light source or which are facing away from the light source. So. Uh, that will help me uh, quite a bit to make a uh, more three-dimensional looking terrain with lots of details and I didn't even have to spend a lot of time trying to draw or achieve those details so it's just a, it's just a way of allowing the material to work for me and to create some random details for me and now I'm refining that by going over that with a, a pencil eraser and doing a bit of erasing on the top part of those shapes to further enhance that contrast and to increase the range of value so that I can make uh, those bushes or those suggestions of bushes and grass a bit more three-dimensional. I don't want these uh, lighter portions, lighter bits to be too light because this whole part of the scene is largely in the shadow and I want it to remain darker against the top part of the lighter part of the scene but still I need to have a little bit of variation there because it is the foreground so it needs to have some interesting details there and I'm also using that pencil eraser to draw some clumps of grass maybe some smaller bushes smaller trees here and there uh, just adding a little bit of de detail here and there as needed to complete the scene, to complete this lower portion of the scene. Um, one of the final things that I'm going to do, one of the final touches, I'm going to use this brush to soften those trees and bushes which are further back. So I'm doing this uh, with two reasons. First I want to make this lower part of the mountain a little bit darker and I also want to make those trees in the distance a bit less defined, a bit more blurry so that they're not as distracting and so that we can focus on this tree in the middle. Finally I need to decide where to put the signature. I can put it on the right to balance out with this lighter portion on the left or I can put it to the left because I have an empty space in the top right corner. So I decided to put it on the left side in the lower left corner. You always have to think about where to put your signature to balance out the composition because your signature is a part of the composition. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out my other videos and for longer videos and more content you should check out my Patreon. But thanks for watching once again. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.